Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Raya Salter. This will be a special show on Valentine's Day, love in Hawaii. On Valentine's Day, everyone thinks about love and romance, don't they? This week, we're taking a look at what it's like to be single or maybe not, and looking for love here in Hawaii. Nei. And that means straight talk about dating. What are we supposed to do on Valentine's Day? What is it like to date online? Where can you turn to for help on meeting that special someone? This Valentine's Day, we're peeling back the onion on love. We spoke to singles to explore the ins and outs of the dating scene. We will also share the interviews we had with a certified love coach, and yes, a Honolulu matchmaker. In addition, we'll share stories from our Think Tech on the Street coverage on what people are planning for Valentine's Day. But before we get to that, let's talk about the holiday itself. Actually, it had some really unsexy origins. It turns out that the story of Valentine's Day starts with the Roman Catholic Church in the 5th century. The church sainted two Valentines, both men who were put lovingly to death by the Roman Emperor Claudius II. And that's when the story returns to ancient Rome and gets kind of brutal. Our modern Valentine's Day may have origins in the Roman feast of Lupercalia, held in February where there were animal sacrifices along with unrestrained drinking and violent fertility rites too. After a fairly unromantic origin, the centuries and the dark ages went by without a whole lot of love, and Valentine's Day did not turn into a love-related holiday until Chaucer and Shakespeare started to romanticize it in their writings. Good for them. With all of that, it became a day of exchanging longing love notes and making dramatic gestures and evolved inevitably into the holiday we know today. Today, Valentine's Day is celebrated in different ways around the world. In Japan on Valentine's Day, it's customary for women to be the gift givers. The most popular gift is chocolate. Please keep that in mind. In South Korea on February 14th, Love Day, women also give gifts of chocolate to men to whom they are attracted. But that's not all. White Day is celebrated on March 14th, and a third day, Black Day, which falls on April 14th, is dedicated to the wallflowers who have been left out of both Love Day and White Day. That's not one Valentine's Day, but three. They know how to live. And this takes us to Hawaii here in 2017 and the modern notion of love locally on Valentine's Day. What do people in Hawaii think about it these days? And what, in fact, do they do about it? We went to Tamron Park at Bishop Square, the center of downtown Honolulu, to find out. What was the first Valentine you ever got? Oh, probably from my my mom or dad. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a I little. That's still the Valentines I get. Yeah, that's that's the best kind. I think <laughs> <laughs> they give you a little candy and they're like, "We love you. You are our favorite Valentine." Mm -hmm. That is totally legit. <laughs> How about you? I think my one's like a kindergarten, you know how you get those candy with the little no, with like a secret admirer or something? So have either of you had a secret admirer, even from school, or get one of those Valentines where they say secret admirer? Oh, not since high school. Well, no, tell us about the high school one. <laughs> tell us about the high school one. That's good enough. In high school, I was in a high school musical play, <laughs> and so um, we were doing it at the all-boys school here, St. Louis, and so we had these little Valentine's things, and so the boys would leave us a little Valentine's gift from a secret admirer, so that was probably my only secret admirer experience. Experience. Did you ever figure out who it was that gave it to you? I did. So I was Gabriella in the musical, oh, and it was Troy. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. I, that's actually sweet. Almost a little too sweet, but that's sweet. And um, how about you? I think I did in Karen Garden, but I can't remember his name. Or I can't remember <laughs> what was the situation. Did you maybe get, like, was it something in your locker, or how did that work? Like the candy with the little note on my desk or something, but... Nothing, nothing as special as Miss Gabriella over here. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you tell us who did you give your first Valentine to? It was um, an ex-boyfriend of mine um, from 22 years ago, and we are actually still very, very good friends to this day. Who doesn't have memories of their first love, their first Valentine? Hawaii is such a small place where so many people know each other all their lives. A kind of goldfish bowl where there are no secrets. Here, more than in other places, old flames may be a problem for new ones. 
for insight into this issue and for tips on finding your true love in our islands, we spoke to Ami Allen of Matchmaking Hawaii. Because we are in a much more smaller area geographically, the six degrees of separation mm -hmm. is probably more like two. And because people are very keen to see if whether we have somebody in common, but when they do, because they mostly do, you know, <laughs> you talk to somebody long enough, you're going to have a couple of people in common. And that's just the way things are here. But because like, oh my gosh, you know, you went to, you know, Kaiser. Oh, my brother went to Kaiser. And then, oh, you know, Steve. Oh my gosh. And then people start thinking, okay, well, that's a little too close. I can't date her and break up with her. And then what's going to happen to my relationship with Steve? And, you know, there's a lot of repercussions because there's that closeness. And because you have, you know, a lot of, you know, you have people in common. Also, you know, um, because it is a small area, um, where people meet new people is not always, you know, it's very difficult to meet new people, but you meet people through work or at work. Um, you probably, most people don't really want to go there and make that into a romantic relationship because right. what if, you know, you have the a same. bad breakup, you can't really change jobs. What's somebody to do? Like, so the, it, let's take that first instance where, you know, it's the reality and mm -hmm. people, you know, know each other and, you know, in fact, say on Facebook, mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, every new Facebook friend I make, mm -hmm. you know, is a second connection to yes. <laughs> literally anyone else I've ever mm -hmm. met. So, I mean, it's, what is one, what is one to do? Is it something that, um, you know, how does one sort of get beyond that? Is it mental? Is it, is it become, a, is it a fear that's justified? Is it, or is it, you know, how does one proceed? I think you, you know, when people are looking for love, there's a kind of there's a couple of things that's very important. First of all, you have to be open-minded. You know, when you meet somebody new, use your instinct whether you should be sharing information with that person or not. Because if you really think about it and use your instinct, you know whether it's okay or not. And you know that gut feeling that mm -hmm. most people ignore sometimes. Mm -hmm. No, go with the gut feeling and be open about it and stay positive. And I think those are really important things when, you know, you want things to, to work out. What are some of the, say, the top three mistakes that people make um, when they're looking for love? I think um, when you're looking for love, it's probably better that you're not under the influence of alcohol. You want to have a clear mind to really see whether that chemistry is there. And I think that's one mistake that a lot of people do, just looking in the wrong place, you know, places where alcohol is involved. is not conducive to that. You know, actually, that's very interesting because sometimes I think the first thing people want to do is, mm -hmm. is grab a drink. Hey, mm -hmm. let's Pauhana, can we get a drink? Mm -hmm. And it helps sort of take some of the, maybe the nervousness and the mm -hmm. anxiety away. Mm -hmm. um, what are what are some things, you know, if, if someone is going to avoid alcohol, uh, what are some things they can do? I, actually, they could go to a bar and, and just order soda. Sure. You know, so you could still, or maybe choose like a non-bar type of environment. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, of course, bars have a nice setting. It's very romantic. There's no reason to have more than one drink. You know, you can have your drink and enjoy the alcohol, but one over, you know, the whole evening is not that bad. And like you said, you can order something else. You can go there and have, you know, poo-poos and, and just enjoy that conversation. It's just being under the influence is just not conducive to having that clarity. What would be your advice for singles on Valentine's Day? You know, to be honest, it's just another holiday. A matchmaker here in Hawaii in the 21st century, hearkening back perhaps to the age-old matchmakers of the 19th century and before. There was a movie by that name in the 1950s with Shirley Booth. And everyone remembers Matchmaker, Matchmaker from Fiddler on the Roof. Just as the matchmakers of the past, Ami the matchmaker puts people together by fomenting contact between her clients. How would you like to be a fly on the wall of her office? I admire her because she's in a position to give people a beautiful and hopefully a lifelong gift. But what about the more complicated side of things, Raya? What about the more transitory limerence of a powering romantic longing, which can turn an ordinary person into a lovesick puppy? Heartbreak can, well, you know, break your heart. 
It's the stuff of which so much great music, poetry, love stories, tragedies, and sitcoms are made. Love can be all-consuming, something that sweeps you away and makes you moonstruck and hopelessly irrational. But it's not always easy or natural. They say that before you can surrender, before someone else can love you, you need to love yourself. With that in mind, we spoke with Shauna Campbell, a certified love coach, about preparing yourself for love and learning how you can successfully manage the campaign, the chase, and the experience. I love to tell people what I do because I get that like doggy ear, like, oh, mm, like love coach. <laughs> and people have their own definition. They probably think of a matchmaker or they think I'm, you know, a, a dating coach and whatnot. And I in short, I tell people just if you've seen the movie Hitch, I'm kind of like the female version of oh, that in that's a way. Exciting. <laughs> uh, it was a the, fe female Will Smith <laughs> kind of hooking us up when we're right. falling down in our faces. Right. <laughs> But more so my concept, I talk, is really focused on self-love. The top three issues, one, I can't find someone on my level. <laughs> so whether um, either you could be someone with a certain educational mm -hmm. background mm -hmm. or financial, you know, whatever things that you want in a relationship, you may not find that person that kind of, um, on quote unquote, on your level and kind of get like frustrated. So that's an issue. Um, some people are like, why am I still single? And then they are tempted, and sometimes they do buy into the story where there must be something wrong something with me. Something wrong with me, You know, right. well, I'm a you know, great catch. I'm a great man. I'm a great woman. Like, you know, I have things going on for me. Why can't I find that person? And the third thing I think most of everyone do is overanalyzing. <laughs> for me, because I'm always going to go back to self, it's like how a person if you see that's going to be a challenge. Not, not ignoring that that could be a possible, but if you allow that to take a toll on yourself, like, oh man, like no one, I'm a single parent, I'm a, you know, no one is not going to want me or date me or I have to wait till my child gets older right, and right. this and that. And like, who wants to, so it's really the self-talk if you're like a single dad, you know, divorced. Um, you know, I would just really like seek, you know, just really sit with yourself and um, ask yourself if you're ready for a relationship, you know, and why are you ready for a relationship or you feel like you can't have love, why can't I? So it's just really, it all goes back to self because it's not impossible because people get married, you know, again <laughs> and have blended families. So it's not impossible is what you tell yourself. We live in beautiful Hawaii, staycation. Staycation could be in the house or visiting another neighbor in Ireland. I Ireland Island. <laughs> <laughs> Two, if you're someone who's like outdoors, you know, probably like going out for a hike and then end the day having a picnic on the beach or at the park, you know, that that could be someone's idea of romantic. Um, if you're someone who have children, definitely see if you could get a babysitter and go out or do the reverse, you know, they could spend the night out at a family member's house or someone that you trust and create a romantic evening at home. Um, if you want to be fancy, you know, find a fancy restaurant or probably um, a private catamaran, catamaran ride and oh. have like a private dinner, you know. Um, but then the fifth, number five, I said anything that adds a special personalized touch. I think could be that's the, exactly you know, right. Whether if you have a romantic dinner, like, hiking and find a spot or to like a five-star restaurant so like say if you're someone who loves like gummy bears and that's uh, something you don't have all the time <laughs> and someone ushers you like oh my gosh gummy bears it's, it's, it's gonna be the little thing that's gonna be the highlight of that romantic even who knew there was such a thing as a certified love coach that sounds like it's out of a sitcom too i can see it now in seinfeld our ways of courtship are more subtle, more sophisticated these days, and given the complexity of dating and mating in 2017, it sounds like a love coach could be very helpful. I certainly agree, Jay. Now, with the leverage of online dating apps, social media, and a thousand new ways to express your sexuality, things are getting more challenging and rewarding, and perhaps more risky and risque for the people involved. We spoke with some singles to find out what they do to mix and mingle in the age of the internet. What are some of the challenges, pitfalls? 
Come on, <laughs> open up. <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, <clears throat> I think um, since I've been here, a lot of people tend to move um, in and out of the islands. <clears throat> so it's very difficult sometimes to uh, have a, a relationship that's a little bit longer than just a couple of years because they tend to be more transient. Oh, folks are coming and going. And also folks like they come maybe thinking they're going to stay, change their mind. What do you think? Hawaii? People are looking for an experience when they come to the Hawaiian Islands. Oh, what kind of experience are we talking they about? They want... I mean, this is such a beautiful place. Mm. I mean, so much romance, there's so much love, I mean, just surrounding this um, this island chain. I think people uh, are looking for that affair, that uh, little bit of passion, you know. Um, and sometimes the locals kind of serve that purpose. Um, mm, I, for me, I live in Waikiki, and um, that's, that's sort of a pitfall for me because, you know, I got all these local, I mean, I got all these tourists coming through and not enough locals. And of course, they want to latch onto you because you know the islands. You you you're you're been you've been here for a while, and they want that experience. And you're there to show them. You know, that's so interesting. As a as another local, what do you what's your take on that? Well, um, I think when you get into a relationship, you want to if you're actually going to try and build something, you're going to build a sense of permanence. And being on an island, a lot of people myself included, don't really want to stay here for that long. And so, <laughs> she said myself included. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, wait, break well, this down for us, Elise. Let, what is going on with this? Well, so, I mean, it's limiting. And especially, I think it's different for people who are not from here because, you know, there's something that you can grow, you can build, you can create your own life. Whereas um, for people who are born and raised here, it's all familiar. I mean, I step onto any any chunk of sidewalk that's one square foot I've already stepped on like a dozen times in my <laughs> life and ha each one has three different right. stories to it. I mean, it's, it's limiting. And so you can't build that much when what you have is already built. And um, I think, yeah, and, and when you make a relationship, you're staking your turf. You're putting, your, mm -hmm. putting something down to stay with. And, and that, you know, it's not, I think get an island community gets in the way of that. People are less inclined, less eager to do that. That's, that's super interesting. And I feel like there are a lot of reasons for that. One, one thing I, what we were talking about earlier is there's this incredible lack of anonymity. Hmm. You know, like everyone knows everyone. <clears throat> and sooner or later, you know, you may date someone and then, you know, find that your friend or someone you know is also true. dated that person. This is true. Um, <laughs> what you this is true. It has happened multiple times. And yeah. plus, you know, like say in New York City, I could um, go down to Tommy Bahamas and totally scandalize myself and nobody would <laughs> Burn Here, if I were to do that, I might actually be scandalizing myself. <laughs> so, what are, like, so, true. What are, yeah, true. so what are what are you guys' thoughts on some of these unique? Yeah, you know, coming from Atlanta, we our population is like six million. There. I know, right? And then you come here, you're 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 big fish in a small pond, you know, and <laughs> <laughs> and everybody is so connected to one another. I mean. And I also work with the public, so I even find that some of the clients that I work with know people that I know. So, I mean, it's just, yeah, yeah you have to be careful. You have to have a sense of purpose and, a, and a, some, some sense of integrity and character about yourself when you live here. Ah, that's, right. that's interesting. What are, what are your thoughts, Sean? Oh, absolutely. I think um, that's what's tough, too, especially in the workplace yeah. when... <clears throat> you know, people that um, you know, especially when you work for a bigger corporation, which I do. Um, I work for a very... Um, Prestige airline. I won't say anything else. <laughs> However, <laughs> no one that one out, Sean. Big However, <laughs> <laughs> so as you can tell, it would be very challenging to meet people that don't. To your point, you know that are connected with other people yeah. that aren't getting back onto the plane. Exactly. <laughs> what an interesting group, Raya, and what an interesting discussion you had. So different from the way it was when I was coming of age. I ought to be young again. But given the opportunities, why aren't they all married? Maybe with the liberation and prospect of all this technology, they're having too much fun. But who knows? Maybe this year, the year of the rooster, Cupid will strike them too. Maybe so. On that note, let's go back to our Think Tech on the Street coverage to see what the people in Tamarind Park are planning to do with their sweethearts on Valentine's Day. Do you have any special plans for your wife of 45 years on Valentine's Day? 
Uh, uh, yes, I already uh, celebrated the uh, 45th anniversary uh, last week with my wife, and I gave her a big gift. She loved it. Where'd you get it? Where'd you get her? Where'd you get her? Where'd you get her? Money. Oh, yes. <laughs> Just cash, jewelry. How did that go? Cash, cash. She like cash. Yeah, <laughs> she doesn't like anything there. Only cash. Okay, so I give me checks. Yeah. Okay, for this for Valentine's, we go and go out for a big dinner with her. Yes, and a lovely wife. Okay, okay. So tell us about the dinner, and I, I know you don't want to ruin the surprise, but tell us about the gift. About the gift. Oh, that, that's a surprise also. What kind of dinner? Big dinner. What kind of dinner? Uh, we go to a luxury, a very romantic uh, restaurant. Tell us about the first time you got a Valentine. Um, well, so, because I'm originally from Taiwan, Taipei, so um, my first Valentine was celebrated there. Um, it was, actually, it was just very simple, because we're all, you know, working on exam, trying to get to the best school. Um, so we were, you know, studying, and then all of a sudden, like, you know, after all the hard works, boom, boom, like a box of chocolate, you know, a love letter, that, that's it, yeah. A box of chocolate and a love letter. So interesting. Well... I guess that wraps up our Think Tech special on love in Hawaii. Food for thought, for the heart, and of course, for the senses. It's been our pleasure to take the lid off love and find out more about Valentine's Day this time of year. To everyone out there, whether you're married, single, or other, we hope you find your heart throb. And in any event, that you have a wonderful and loving Valentine's Day on February 14th and all through the year. Aloha. Yes, among other things, it means love. And now let's take a look at our Think Tech calendar of events going forward. There's so much happening in Hawaii. Sometimes things happen under the radar and we don't hear much about them. But Think Tech will take you there. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on OC16 several times every week to stay current on what's happening in government, industry, academia, and communities around the islands and the world. Think Tech broadcasts its daily talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then, we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show, or if you want to replay or share our shows, they're all archived on demand on thinktechhawaii.com and YouTube. The audio is on thinktechhawaii.com slash radio. And we're now posting podcasts of all of our shows on iTunes. Visit thinktechhawaii.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links. Or sign up on our email list and get the daily docket of our upcoming shows. Think Tech has a high-tech green screen First Amendment studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to join our live audience or participate in our shows, write to think at thinktechhawaii.com. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at thinktechhi. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives together in these islands. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together.
call into our talk shows live. While you're watching any of our shows, you can call into 415-871-2474 and pose a question or otherwise participate in the discussion. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Raya, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Raya does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on ThinkTech, visit ThinkTechHawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our ThinkTech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness and love in Hawaii. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Raya Salter. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.